Okay, now we've got the crossover in place. We've got the positive binding post in place. Um, while the video was off, I did unscrew the crossover and run the blue wire up rather than down. This is the one that goes to the woofers. Um, the reason I did that was I want the positive and the negative wire leads to be as short as possible. So I brought the red out the top, I'm sorry, the blue out the top. So that'll be the positive going to the two woofers. And as you parallel them down, the negative of the woofers will be right next to the, po the negative binding post. So, I mean, you'll need like a three inch piece of wire at the most. So I did pull it out the top just to make it so that the negative of the woofers is right next to the negative binding post. All right, so you can do it either way. It's not gonna make any difference. I just didn't want a loose wire wrapping up over top of the crossover for, for no reason. It was easier just to take the two screws out, wrap it behind, and have it come out the top. All right. So the next step is I'm going to go ahead and take two of the side firing drivers and solder my jumper leads that will go from the top to the bottom driver. And Robert has those in the manual as purple, I believe. So I'm going to take two pieces of wire that will probably only be about six inches and solder it to two of the drivers. I'm going to work on the two top ones first, mount them in place, and then run the wires out, solder those, and mount those in place. Okay? So we're going to, and again, we used about a foot of red wire. You can see here it's a lot of wire on the inside of the chassis. You really don't need that much excess wire. If you want to trim this down and shorten it, you can. Or if you've got to go from here and you do want to go to the XLR, you've got plenty of wires to jump this over. It's kind of excess, but you know, it also makes it easier if you've got to take something apart. You don't want to unsolder everything to get parts out. Leave your wires extra long, but then you've always got to tuck them in, make sure they're not getting pinched. I like keeping my wires as short as humanly possible, but that runs into problems later on when you got to take parts out because then you got to unsolder. There isn't enough room. Okay, so we're going to take one driver. Your large spade is your positive input. The small spade is your negative output. Okay, every driver is identical. And if you want to double check that, you can take a 9 volt battery connect this to the positive, this to the negative, and as you touch it to it, you'll see the driver will excurd out. That means positive is out. So if you switch the battery around, it'll suck the driver down in if you've got it backwards. Okay? So positive, negative. We're going to connect the negative of this to the positive of the next speaker. So I'm going to use the negative terminals with the purple wire. And these are okay, you can set them on their face, it's not going to hurt anything. The surrounds are pretty soft. Just don't rip it or tear it across the surface, that would be bad. <clears throat> okay, I'm going to use, we'll guess about 6 to 8 inches. And again, Robert has the manual as purple as a jumper between the two drivers, so we're going to use that. But you can use black, you can use whatever, it doesn't really matter. <clears throat> And these little leads do not need to be long because you're, you're soldering to a very small little terminal. So I like leaving these pretty short. And if, if someone has never seen these wire strippers before, these things are like one of the coolest tools ever if you deal with wire. I'm pretty sure they have them at Home Depot and Lowe's. They're not cheap. I say they're like 30 to 50 bucks a pair. But after you've done three or four hundred wires, you won't care what they cost by any means. You'd pay twice as much to have a set. So these things are really nice. They're all spring-loaded, one action. It crimps the wire first, then it grabs, actually it grabs the wire in the correct hole. These are 18 gauge wire. So it'll grab the wire, then it comes down and pinches the wire on the back side. Then it puts more pressure on the cutter to actually cut the shielding and then they start to separate. This is grabbing the wire with the shielding. This is grabbing just the wire basically. It's not grabbing anything. It's designed so that the wire will slip through the hole and push the, push the rubber jacket off. So if you take a piece of wire and do it from the top view kind of close so you can see what it does. These are really cool. You put it in your 18 gauge slot. You can see where it starts to grab down onto the wire. And then as soon as you've got it and you put a little pressure on it, 
it just pulls it apart and it automatically springs back every time so he's really really fast okay back to these we're going to take two of the mid drivers and you can leave the little covers on while you're doing this too just so that you don't uh, damage anything if you want to I haven't had any trouble working with them with or without the covers so it doesn't really matter too much to me um, I'm not sure how easy it's going to be to, for the camera to see this we'll put them together there you go that's a lot better okay and I like to tin everything first just so that it's not such a pain later when you try getting the wire and something doesn't want to stick now be very careful soldering to these terminals because heating up these terminals melts the plastic back here pretty quickly if you're not careful and I've had some of these terminals kind of start to wiggle loose because the plastic has been melted so much so try not to overheat them and while I'm doing this I'm just gonna tin both sides while I'm at it so I don't have to do it later This one. This one looks like it's got a little bit of plastic in the way almost. And it doesn't take much to tin these. They tin very nicely. They probably are pre-tinned, but I like having a little bit of extra solder on there so that when I put my wires in, I don't have to keep feeding a bunch of wire while I'm trying to connect the two. Alright, so we've got that. I'm going to tin these little wires quickly. And I'm going to tin both ends while I'm at it so I don't have to do it twice. That's another little tool I found a lot of people don't know about or don't use. Uh, I had a friend that did electronics repair and he told me to go down to the store and buy one of these. Anybody that solders, go get yourself a stainless steel scrubby. Uh, a lot of marine hardware stores have them. Some of the older school mom and pop hardware stores might have them. But these things are amazing for jabbing your soldering iron into and getting all the excess flux and solder and junk off and they last forever I've had this one for probably five or six years and you know it works awesome so it works a lot better than the little piece of uh, foam or sponge that they put in the soldering iron kits those are terrible get, get yourself a stainless steel scrubby it works ten times better I got both of those tinned. Now I'm going to do is connect one wire to each driver on the negative side because we're going to hook the positive up to the blue wire in a minute. So this will become the jumper wire from your top driver to your bottom drivers. Okay. Let's see, see how easy this is. Once you pre-tin everything, you pretty much just mash it down together. And once the solder on the top and the bottom melt, you got a really good fast connection I and mean, that's not going anywhere <coughs> again the small tab the negative side of the driver I'm going to do this as an ex just to show you what can happen. I hope it shows up on the video. I'm going to get this one kind of hot. And then I'm going to let the solder itself cool. And I'm going to tug on the wire. And watch what's going to happen to the black plastic up here. See how the plastic 
will let the tab move you got to be careful not to do that because if you if you don't wait long enough for the terminal and the plastic to cool it really really melts the back side of this terminal up in inside the plastic you got to be careful of that because you can put your finger right there and it's toasty up there inside the plastic it's real hot <clears throat> so be careful don't do that okay so now we've got our two top drivers ready to install basically all right we got our chassis binding post at the bottom obviously so we're going to take one of these drivers and I'm only going to put two screws in it for now just to hold it in place <clears throat> so we can continue soldering and go moving along all right so what we're going to do is we're going to make sure that the purple is the negative lead and we want the purple to come down and out to be the positive of the next driver okay so we're going to mount the driver in here with the purple wire towards the bottom with the speaker standing up top driver bottom driver okay now we're just going to take two screws put them in there this is where you don't want to mix your screws up you have a lot of 10 millimeter long screws i believe there's 24 or 32 of them in this package have to look at the list the other one there's only eight don't use the longer eight screws save those for later they come up here <coughs> i'm just going to take two for now and get these lined up and i believe this is a two and a half millimeter tip. That one's probably a two. This is your two and a half. Okay. Like I said, I'm just going to get them started just so the driver can't fall out. Be careful not to cross thread anything. Everything should pretty much go in very easily. If something binds right away, stop. Back your screw out, jiggle it around, make sure you've got it lined up correctly before you strip something. Because if you strip the screws or the, the PEM nut inserts in the back, you're going to have a hell of a time. Really tiny metric taps, you're going to have to try to fix the chassis. That's not fun. Okay, so just get those in there snug. Now flip it over. Like I said, you can set it down on the surround. Just be careful. I haven't had any problem doing it before. And again, same thing. Have your negative lead come out to your next driver. Set that one in, line up your screw holes, are about right there, take two more of your 8mm screws and get these started as well. I'm not even using a screwdriver, I'm just grabbing the hex bit and getting it taut just so the drivers won't fall out or move on me. Okay, now you can see how much room you've got in there. There's a little, you know, you've got about a three quarters of an inch between the drivers to run wires and for all your foam and stuff that you're going to, the polyfill that you're going to stick in there later. Um, but you definitely want your two positive leads up here at the top. It's going to make it a little bit easier and I'm going to show you how I wire things. A lot of other people won't recommend doing it this way or they'll find it too difficult. I like having the least amount of wires possible and as direct of a connection as possible. So I've got the positive lead coming from the crossover for the woofers. Now I'm going to leave a little bit of excess. I'm going to figure, I don't know, about an extra inch, inch and a half. Okay. Now what I want to do is I'm going to take this wire right here. I'm going to kink it with my fingernail so I can see it. And then I'm going to take my wire strippers. Now, if you've got a good pair of wire strippers or a razor blade or whatever, if you feel confident doing it this way, basically all I'm doing is stripping the shielding to give myself some bare wire. Okay? And then I'm going to solder that right to the terminal. 
and then jump the other end of the wire over to the other side of the speaker. Very simple, but you might need a little practice in doing it. If you've never done it before, you got to be careful that you don't cut the wire in trying to strip it back like that. Um, worst case scenario is you're going to cut the wire, then you're going to have to strip it back, twist two wires together, and solder them to the terminal. It's the same thing, just one less step. I just like going on, pulling the shielding back just, a, just enough to be able to solder to the, to the wire inside. But that means I have to tin the wire right there too. Because this thing's already tinned. So now we're gonna I'll tin the connection. And this helps shrink back the heat the shielding a little bit too. When you heat it up, it kind of melts back a little. Put a nice little glob on there. This doesn't look like I tinned it. Either I didn't tin it or I didn't tin it very well. And again, you got to make sure that this is the positive terminal of both of these drivers. If you've got a small lead up here, you messed up. Take your driver out, turn it around, and get it right. Okay, now this, very simple. You can just straddle it across there and solder it. And I do this for the positives, the negatives. I really like doing it this way because it's one less step, it's very clean. Very simple. And very hot. I'm burning my finger. Damn. Okay, so there's your positive coming from your crossover to the first woofer. And over here, you basically just I mean this this kind of moved when I when I stripped it, so I'm gonna strip it back a little bit more. Okay. In this, did I? I think I did. Get this wire out of the way. That's for the ribbon, so it'll actually come out the front later anyway. But you can go from there to here, and it's that simple. Otherwise, you wind up cutting and twisting a whole bunch of wires together to accomplish the same thing. Some people want to run two separate leads out from the crossover, one to this driver, one to that driver. It really makes no difference whatsoever. I just find this quick and easy. your positive lead going from the crossover to both two top drivers okay now we move on to the bottom two drivers now this is where some people if you'd wanted to create a longer loop here you could um, personally I don't like excess long wires hanging out so I didn't <coughs> and we're gonna do the same thing in these two drivers first. Might as well do all four terminals while we're at it again. You can see they're actually tinned already, but I like having a nice big glob of solder on there to melt to. Makes it a lot easier when you're connecting the wires. Instead of having to feed solder into it as you do it, you've already got the solder sitting there. You just gotta heat it up melt the wires together basically. It only takes a couple of seconds. It's nothing. take one of these drivers, positive lead, hook it up to the purple wire that's coming out the side over here, either side. We're going to do them both and we're going to mount them in the chassis. 
Okay, so just put the driver there. Make sure the camera can see it pretty well. It's kind of dark. Let's see if I can turn the driver so you can see better. That's better. A lot more light. Okay. And then all you're going to do is just melt those two together. second to cool and that one's in there. Now we can take this driver, lay this on its side, mount this one so it doesn't move. Now we're going to flip it over and do the other side. I can get it so the camera can see it and I can hold it all at the same time. Seems a little smelly for some reason. Don't worry. Okay, there you go. Positive sides of everything, except the ribbon, are connected. You should have two of the small leads pointing the bottom. Those are going to be your negatives. They're going to go to your binding post or the XLR. And that's it for right now. I'm going to stop the video and we'll do the negative binding post and the ribbon next.